this year we marked the 10th anniversary of the UN Guiding Principle on Business and Human Rights this year in June. Their unanimous endorsement by the United Nations Human Rights Council was a landmark moment for efforts to promote respect for human rights and sustainable business. In the Pacific, we stand at a crossroads in terms of how we build back, up, we build back better, or some would say forward, for the global, um, global COVID-19 pandemic, which has hit our economies, our societies, families and individuals so hard. It is only through taking a human rights-based approach that involves everyone to participate in open, transparent and accountable responses that we will solve these issues. All of us are talking about this protect, respect and remedy framework. This provides a pathway to create an inclusive and sustainable society. And we can see the benefits of gender equality and diversity, how it improves businesses. So improved human rights, it's not a trade-off. Improving human rights means better equality, better opportunity for everybody, and it makes great business sense. We can, in partnership with you, bring attentions and concerns to companies, right? That we are one more challenge channel, and so please think of us as one more tool in your toolkit. Our concern, given the existing legacies of resource extraction and the human rights track record of the industry, is that the global solutions to climate change will amplify already existing pressures in the Pacific. We're asking questions about who wears the costs and where the benefits lie for this, this type of activity. We need to set out now how present and future technologies will be used for our benefit and national strategies help set a vision for that responsible innovation. We need human rights embedded into our regulatory ecosystem so that we are prepared for those unforeseen and different risks that are emerging from new technologies. I would like to highlight one particular important good practice we need to preserve so that the business and human rights agenda is effectively advanced in the Pacific. We must ensure that civic state is open and that all stakeholders and communities, particularly individuals and groups in vulnerable and marginalized situations, are meaningfully consulted and engaged when working to advance the business and human rights agenda. It is the role of the United Nations, as determined by its member states, to work in a collaborative manner with business partners to seek positive action. Through this positive and comprehensive approach, Pacific states can harness the power of businesses and use this force to contribute to the realization of the 2030 Agenda.